in order to have something to solder in our class, I thought we'd make a small charm bracelet. And I found when I teach classes, even though I assume everybody knows how to open a jump ring, a lot of people don't. So for the purposes of this um, video, I thought we'd start with some pretty big jump rings. These are 12 millimeter um, jump rings. Um, they're about uh, 18, 20 gauge thick, I think is what it was. was. And these are a, a large bead with like a four millimeter opening. So we thought we'd just put something together like that. That way um, we can see the actual jump ring. First thing you want to do is to find the opening in the jump ring. There's the opening in this particular jump ring. Um, I'm going to use um, a flat plier. What, what I want to do is, usually if you can find a matched pair, these are kind of rusty but they work like a dream. Um, these came from um, I, just a hardware store. They weren't very fancy, but the key is there's no teeth inside. There's no ridges. There's no marks. They're completely smooth and they're flat. Okay. Um, this is a similar smooth inside. It's just pointy or if desperate, you could always use a round um, pliers. The round pliers don't hold as well. Um, I find it works best if you have a matched pair. But remember, whatever you do, you don't want to have teeth inside. If there's teeth inside while you're gripping something, it's going to leave marks on what you're doing. Okay, in order to open a jump ring correctly, we're going to take one plier and put it on one side of the opening and the other matching plier on the other side of the opening. We're going to take two pliers and push them toward, okay, I'm going to take my right hand and push it toward my left shoulder and my left hand away from there. So I'm kind of crisscrossing them. I'm not going directly apart from the two rings. Now I'm going to take, add the ring that I want to add to it, and I'm going to take the jump ring and come back, directly back. Now you'll see they overlap just slightly and I'm just going to pull them a little tiny bit apart and put them together. That means there's going to be some tension where the two of them touch each other. If, if you pull it apart directly back and forth, okay, like this, and if you pull the two like that and then go back, you're going to leave a gap and there's no tension between the two edges. So if you twist them just a little bit, then when you come back, there's like a just a tad of tension and they um, stay touching each other. So that's the best way to do this. Put this one back together again and I can feel there's a little tension once again on this jump ring. Now I'm going to proceed to continue to do this until I have a full bracelet made. Now that I made the whole bracelet, um, you can see here um, my wrist is about a seven and a half so it took 14 large beads and 15 of the large 12 in, uh, millimeter jump rings. I've added a snap or a ball and hitch uh, connector at the end. It's a ball and a ring. They snap over each other it's a good one-handed bracelet ring. This bracelet can be worn as it is now, as long as you don't add charms to it. Um, it's not going to come apart because very much because there's big beads between and they're not going to come out of the little slots. But if you put dangles or charms on this bracelet, I'll guarantee you the first time you wear it, everything's going to fall off of it. So that's why in our next video, we're going to solder this bracelet. I hope you join us.